field, which probably takes us on, mate. We've got to address the, the Mo Salah situation. I think that if Liverpool do lose Mo Salah, I don't think they can replace him. I don't think they can even attempt to replace him at this stage of a transfer window. Um, now, the club's stance is that Salah won't be going. Um, and all the Liverpool reporters are, are, are kind of uh, echoing that. Of course they the are. Player, the player's tempted. The player's more than tempted. The player's quite keen, from what I'm told. And um, I spoke to a contact today who I know has spoken to someone who's very close to Mo Salah. And he was like, mate, I'm almost expecting this to happen. Not wondering. I'm almost expecting it to happen. Wow. And I was like, that's pretty significant. I mean, obviously, like the money on offer is absolutely outrageous. I think it's more than that, too, though. I think he likes the idea of the kind of icon status that he would have over in Saudi Arabia and what would mean for his own personal profile. Obviously, it helps if you go in on similar wages to, to Cristiano Ronaldo. But it's a really difficult one because for Liverpool, they don't want to lose Mo Salah right now. And I understand that. But I would kind of flip that too and be like, have you ever been so well prepared? And are you ever going to get an occasion when you can lose Mo Salah and potentially be OK, like the situation you're in right now? Because if you did get, I mean, let's say it's £120 million for Mo Salah, you've already got in your squad to play up front. Jota, Diaz, Gakpo, Darwin Nunez, people will not really take into account at the moment that Dominic Soboslai can play wide on the right. He can play on the right side of that attack, if, especially if they're bringing in another midfielder. If they do bring in Gravenberch, Gravenberch can go into the middle as an option there, and Soboslai can be a rotator out on the right. Also, Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott played a lot of his time, a lot of his football as a right-sided attacker. So Liverpool have already got a couple of extra options that can play in those positions. Darwin Nunez has just shown what he's capable of if you give him a chance in this team. I know it was Salah feeding him one of the chances, but still. And then you kind of sit on this money, which, by the way, can you imagine FSG getting an offer of like hundreds of so pounds that's for, for an asset? But but listen, I, told. You have to look at the deal. In terms of Liverpool, they've also got a player who should not be at right back that I think would thrive further up the pitch. And that's Trent. Trent, yeah. Like, yes, he's right footed, but I've been talking about this a, a, a bit recently that I think there's going to be another change in football tactics soon where we're going to stop. I think you're going to start to see less inverted inside forwards wingers used in yeah. the coming years. And people are going to go back to, well, let's go on the outside and start cutting balls back into the box, a very old school approach. But defenders have become so used to defending against full uh, wide players cutting yeah. in onto their, on the, onto their stronger foot. Yeah. How much practice are they now doing on people going on the outside? And we've seen, Already, the, the, the attacking wingers have, have now stopped, essentially, and everyone's looking to invert their wingers, and there's changes there. So there, there, there are options for Liverpool. On top yeah. of it, you have to consider Mo Salah's motivation. And we were talking off-air about this. He's been offered £350,000 a week tax-free. So we have 280 odd million to him, which is... He's already a millionaire, but this is, this is ultra-rich. Yeah. On top of that, I was talking to a few people that I know that are connected to, 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 to let's say connected to Egypt, they're Egyptian, about the, the guy Mo will never fail that spoke to us about, and I spoke, reached out to a few friends of mine I used to work with that, that are from that part of the world. I said, what have you heard about this TV deal? And essentially what I've been told is that he's been offered a percentage around two, two and a half, maybe even 3% of the revenue generated from people that sign up to the TV broadcaster in Egypt to watch the Saudi League. He will earn a percentage of the revenue. So if 20 million people sign up to a 599, 1099, 1299 a month package, mm. which is more than just watching Saudi football, but it includes that. How much more money is that going to be for him over a three to four year period? Three, four, five hundred million pounds more? Yeah. So much money. Yeah. And that isn't about him becoming super rich. There's this element of he's a big philanthropist, does a lot of work for charity. Imagine what he could do for those charities, for those things that motivate him with £400 million pound versus £10-15 million. Pound. And this is where football fans, this isn't a dig at Liverpool, this is a, a, a genuine view. For some people, there are much bigger things out there than just winning trophies for your football club, especially once they've achieved those things. It's, he's already achieved greatness at Liverpool. He's your greatest ever Premier League player. To be offered this kind of money and this kind of deal, he may just look at it and say, it's generational wealth for my family, 
an extended family forever. And I can do so much good back home for my people with this money. Yeah. It's it's a huge motivator. And I, look, I think Liverpool, look, he may not go, but you've had Ornstein today say never say never. Yeah. And if and if it was completely off the table, you know as well as I do, Ornstein would have found out and would know and would say no chance. The fact he's saying never say never means there is a chance this happens. The fact that Liverpool yeah. have said he's not for sale and not, we can guarantee Liverpool fans he's not leaving. The fact that the agent of Mo Salah hasn't come out and shut this down yet tells you it's not fake news. It tells you there's a possibility that this happens. Yeah. Whether it, it, it may not, but to sit there and bury your head in the sand and pretend it won't, personally, I think that the wrong way to look at it. I would prepare yourself for it may be happening because the money's huge. There's a draw now to go to that league for one reason or another. And your owners, as you just said, are FSG. And if they get, yeah. they still, they're talking 150 million. Say they put the bread up, say they go, okay, look, we'll do 160 all in. They've got the money. Listen, the Saudis have got the money. It's nothing to them. It is. Yeah. These That's... people sell 12 million barrels of oil a day. Yeah. yeah. This, this is a massive day for Liverpool, actually. Um, you know, tomorrow, obviously, the day that everybody looks forward to. But actually, today, I think, in terms of, I mean, it's very easy to have a sense of saying he's not for sale, you know, posting pictures of him on your socials to, to show that he's in training and all the rest of it. That's all fine because there's no bid actually come in at the moment. They haven't had an offer. It all changes. Once the bid comes, that's when Salah can actually show his intentions, when he can actually declare how he's going to feel. At this moment in time, Salah's not going to be sitting out training, is he? Like nothing's actually happened at the moment. You know, but 4,000 miles away, there's some very rich Saudis rubbing their hands together about the, the major disruption they're about to cause to the establishment. <laughs> Did you see, there's a video, uh, This I don't know who he is, he's just a Chelsea fan, and he, he, he did this thing about, he goes, I took my girlfriend to her first Chelsea game. <laughs> and he goes, I posted a picture of her. She was standing, she's a good looking lady, and she's standing by the by the pitch. Mm. And he said, then I couldn't believe it, like, I think Mahalo Mudrik liked the picture, and it's like following his girlfriend, right? <laughs> he, was, he was calling the guy out, like, I, I ain't worried about you, I don't sweat you, but what are you doing, bruv? And I'm like, yeah, you're not acting worried now. If you saw Mahalo Mudrik literally start chatting to your girl, then you're like, oh no, like he's good looking, he's healthy, he's, he's rich, he's in good shape. You, <laughs> then the insecurity comes in. Everyone's confident until you see it happening. Oh, no, my missus will never cheat. And then you see, you know, Brad Pitt walks up to her and starts chatting. Maybe he's a bit old now. It, it was the young, <laughs> stuff, like, the young men that that, that that all the women are, 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 are thorning over. I don't know. Then the insecurity comes in. So as you say, if that bid comes mm. in, then then there we go. Um, it's it's going to be an interesting one. But yeah, Liverpool, Gravenberch, um, the bid's expected to come in uh, today, they're saying. I, I will say this yeah. as well. Um, okay, uh, Fabrizio just tweeted actually saying, understands that Liverpool have confirmed to Bayern uh, they've officially bid, they're ready to make the official bid. So yeah, they yeah. will be bidding. That, that's just come out from Fabrizio Romano. Yeah, so that makes sense. I mean, today was supposed yeah. to be the key day around that one. I know Graven Bursch had no intentions of um, of being part of anything at Bayern today. He's not due at training. So um, yeah, Liverpool, it's a great opportunity for them to actually make the most of this moment. They've, they've literally been on Graven Bursch since day one of this transfer window. I remember writing, uh, Liverpool are hoping... They'll have clarification over Graven uh future with Bayern Munich within the first two weeks of the transfer window. Well, here we are in the last two days, and they still haven't got that indication until right now. But Graven yeah. is available to them, and, and that's because yeah. Bayern now have insight. Their, their list of players that they will now go for in midfield, and that is Palinia, McTominay, and a little bit further down there at Dyer. Yeah, I hope they get McTominay. Um, Me too. Well, no, I hope they get Polinia because it'll weaken it'll weaken Fulham when we have to play him. To be oh, fair, but I, I, do you know what's interesting as well though? Look, I, I think Graven Birch is excellent. I'd love Man United to have signed him. You know, we've prioritised Amrabat. We haven't sold enough to go after him as well. I'd love to have gone head to head with Liverpool to get him. I really would. I'm, I'm a little jealous that Liverpool were getting him. I think he's he's phenomenal. Endo, I don't have an opinion on a player that I never heard never really heard of until now. No. I kind of remember hearing his name at the World Cup, but I don't really remember him. Liverpool fans, though, should still be, again, they're kind of basking in this, ah, oh, we've got Gra Graven Birch and he's rejecting Man United. And fair play. Like, if we've been rejected, I can take it on the chin. Yeah. But the fact you bid £110 million for Caicedo and you were still trying to sign Lavia, so that's £160, £70 million, and you're going to end up spending around £40 million on alternatives, 
The question should be, hang on a damn minute, where's the rest of that money and why haven't we spent it? Where's mm. the rest of that money? Why haven't we gone and bought another centre-back? They need one desperately. They look horrendous at the back. Why haven't we gone and bought a right-back that can defend? Why haven't yeah. we gone and done these other things? So Liverpool fans, I think, should be happy with Graven Birch. I think he's talented. But overall, to go from trying to buy Lavia and Casado and bidding £170 million for the pair to spending around £40 million on Graven Birch and Endo, I don't think there's a Liverpool fan on planet Earth that thinks they've ended up with the same level of quality as they were going for. Plus, you know, the money's there. So they should still be demanding more uh, in the coming in the coming days. It's the same as Man United fans should be angry at their ownership. Liverpool fans, if they're kind of defending this, all you're doing is promoting mediocrity, in my opinion.